So they let a thousand people go uh, from Dublin Airport, a vital piece of infrastructure, as you pointed out yourself. Um, and that redundancy package was signed off by government. So it's not simply a case the government can stand back and uh, as they like to do with, with many things, they can blame somebody else. Uh, the, they the, do the, have a role. The, can, no, can, Louis, can, the, can the, the finish, experts please? are the DA. OK, so this is probably going to continue for the whole evening. Uh, if you don't mind, please don't interrupt me, Karen. Yeah. They have, uh, they signed off on those redundancies. They were warned actually by the unions at the time that there would be queues out to the car park. Th those were the exact words that were used uh, by Jerry Brennan from Zip2. He said there will be queues out to the car park and that's in fact what has happened. I would question how a redundancy situation exists in fact if the job is going to be required because uh, as we all know, it's not the person that gets made redundant, it's the role. So those roles are required. And when Mr McQueen, who you know does a very able job representing Dublin Airport, but what he refers to as as this task force, okay? That's people who already have full-time jobs in Dublin Airport are being asked to come in and do extra time. So they didn't have a contingency plan in place. That was the problem. People are always going to ring in sick. That is the nature of work. You have to have a contingency plan. There was no contingency plan. A thousand people missed their flights. Those people are out of pocket. Some of them have had to cancel their holidays. Okay. How are they going to get their annual leave back? These are all questions that need to be answered. And we also need to know what was said to the junior minister when she went to the meeting with Dublin Airport last Thursday. They were certainly able to pull okay. the wool over her eyes, but the, she the, wasn't the, asking the, the right the questions. Min, the ministers basically said that, that the DA said they had everything in hand. And can I, my main concern at the moment is we are now three or four days away from the June Bank holiday weekend. You know, 100,000 passengers going through per day. The DA need to put a plan in place, whatever form that takes, to ensure and whatever resources are required to make sure people can get their flights. Uh, Owen Corey, two things. Is this happening in other airports? Absolutely. It's happening right across Europe. Um, the airport councils international have identified that... Uh, bringing staff in and recruiting staff for security jobs has been a huge problem. A lot of airports scaled down during COVID. They've also identified passenger behaviour. We're not as adept at packing as we used to be. They've also identified the fact that there's a uh, peaking of flights by the airlines in smaller clusters. It's putting security under pressure, all of them under pressure. But Dublin was pretty spectacular yesterday. All of them are at the edge of being, you know, something swinging them over um, and pushing them over the edge, as happened with Dublin on Sunday. What happened is was quite predictable. Um, we had the issue and of the enhanced vetting came up last September and everybody had to deal with it. The airlines had to deal with it. Mm -hmm. DA seemed to have been slower dealing with that. So in many, many ways, well, you know, when, you, when they were that close to the edge, 17 absentees, drove them over. Every single part of the airport has been under the same pressures. It really needn't have happened on Sunday. Yeah, and the worrying thing is, Owen, as we were saying, <laughs> we're coming on to the June bank holiday weekend yeah. and the start yeah. of the real summer season for a lot of people, June, July and August. And we haven't reached the peak yet, have we? Not at all. June 24 will be the peak in terms of yeah. the passengers going through. The peak, the busiest day in Dublin Airport history is 118,000 in 2018, in 2019. So we're going to be close to that. Now, the Dublin Airport say yesterday was a bit of an anomaly. It didn't happen. But there are other issues. Some of the airlines are facing the same issue. Check-in desks is a problem. We have a tour operator that has people stranded in 11 countries tonight that operates uh, with a good substantial number of Irish customers. It's a big, big problem that is not just about the security queue in Dublin Airport, that internationally the industry has to sit down and different governments. And we also have to look at, for instance, here's a solution for the morning. Those uh, 248 people who were given redundancy are statute barred or under the terms of a redundancy package, not allowed to be rehired. If some sort of temporary stay could be put in to bring people in temporarily over the coming weeks, that would be the first that's, step in the solution. You're that, nodding your head there. You think that's, that's what, a good idea? That's what's required. We are where we are, right? Uh, the DA, and I agree with Owen, the DA sh should have, this thing should have been resolved in terms of recruitment, months away. I've had eight months to put this in place. What we need now is to bring staff, experienced staff back, uh, be it on a temporary basis, to ensure we can get over the cliff edge of next weekend and then the plans they're going to put in place for the rest of the summer. If you have 50,000 passengers going through over the weekend per day, it's going to be 100,000, maybe peak at 120,000. It'll be chaos. And this is about, ultimately, about management. And the spokesman on there from the talks a good line, but ultimately, 
the DA itself in Dublin Airport messed up his but be, be, and management yesterday. Is there a real difficulty here, Daniel, because um, Minister Norton did get reassurances, didn't she, mm. last Thursday, that everything was OK? So how can we trust the next set of assurances? We probably can't until, uh, like, the proof will be in the delivery and I suppose, like, this weekend will be a critical test for the airport. Um, and I think as well, you know, it, it, it reflects somewhat badly on Hildegard Nocton as well. You know, that she has gone and had these daily meetings. We're hearing about these meetings all the time. Like, what are they meeting about? If this thing could still happen, what are they What are they actually being told? What are the Dublin Airport Authority actually telling government like? Yeah. Kieran, Minister Hildegard Nocton has met with the DA repeatedly. The DA are charged with managing their professionals. They're highly paid. So is she getting the wrong information then? Certainly. We're not asking the right questions. No, no, cer no, certainly. When you look at it, right, the, the DA clearly... In terms, and Owen is speaking about, in terms of the mix and the way the passengers came, particularly Sunday morning, they were not prepared. Should the army be brought in, do you think, Louise? And why has that been, you know, written off the table? Well, I think that uh, support should be put in place if they're needed. Um, and I think that they need to work with the, the Dublin Airport Authority on that. But I mean, we can't get away from the fact that, you know, we, and, and Karen can commentate away there, but we can't get away from the fact that the government signed off on that redundancy package without knowing what the contingency arrangement was going to be. So the fact that what happened on Sunday morning, and it does reflect on us uh, badly, not nationally and internationally, of course it does. But more than that, you know, we need to know that we have that connectivity. We need to know that that connectivity is going to be there and going to be reliable. And the only way to do it is to ensure that the airport is properly staffed. Okay, and you I won't properly staff an airport or anything else by allowing people to go when the jobs are there for them to do.